Have you read the Oda and Koei interview? It's actually a pretty good read. I recommend it. Go for it. It's time to go back to the past. Back to where everything started. Well, at least the time with all for one and one for all. The timing to execute a flashback is still random to me, but at least we can start a new arc right away. With that said, I still don't know the purpose behind it outside of his past reveal. Whatever it is, in the long run, it could pay off well as the sign of his aftermath could play a role for what's to come. As mentioned before, Deku only has his upper face and right hand to move around while everything else is clouded. All one for all users are standing, though some have a different display. When they are completely visible, it's safe to say that they are dead. When only the flaming aura exists, which is all might, it is likely mean alive, but retired. As for the shadows, it could either mean they are alive, but no longer possesses the quirk, or Deku has to unlock more to see them. That, or he simply can't see them from afar. The lineup doesn't seem to indicate the order of the users. Otherwise, All Might shouldn't be that far down, let alone next to the two shadows. Maybe the two shadows will play an actual role, while the others are shown for display's sake, sort of like in Hitman Reborn, where only first and certain other boss position matters. In any case, Deku is the ninth user, and he's there to witness the fallout between the brothers. The main premise I'm assuming is about how All For One is using his quirk for selfish desire as the younger brother constantly tells him how evil he is. Deku could only watch and not intervene as he's practically an invisible spectator. He can't alternate the timeline. As a reminder, All For One has the ability to take quirk away as well as giving it. He pulled a demonstration in front of his brother with the two victims one who has the quirk that alters his look, and the other one who has none, but desire for one. This is how evil grows. It's strange how the one who got his ability taken away seems like there's nothing wrong. Like, why the younger brother would cry about it? The one who gained the quirk is understandable since his expression changed to sinister. The actual catch is the two so all for one as their master, so they are willing to repay the favor. Well, I don't see how that it is his fault. It's the people that technically created their own cult in a sense. I guess the fault is taking advantage of the situation, so I'll give him that. He can restore order to the world because he can bring happiness to the people. In short, he's going to take over the world. Of course, the younger brother opposed his attention, but a bodyguard pin him down, indicating All For One has gained many followers already. Despite all of this madness, he still loved his brother, even without a quirk. He saw more people with problems, and he saw more chances for new followers. It was a sneaky move, I have to say. When there's people who refuse to seek his help, the followers will kill them, even if he didn't request it. So yeah. It is his fault to create this chaos, but it sort of undermined the thought of being fully responsible. Maybe that's the point, but we'll see. The one part that is odd to me is how the brothers signifying the comic they read in the past is what altered their lifestyle. I get it's a tie into the world and comic, especially since they miraculously obtained the power, but it is odd and maybe alarming how it influenced their mind. The way how the panel with all for one's eyes open heavily emphasized to be the case. I have Naruto flashback from that. What's also strange is the fact all for one only read up to volume 3 which sounds like it ended on a dark note with villains ruling the world. However, the younger brother read the rest of the story and the hero prevailed in the end. This pushed the thought that villains will always lose which proceeds to enrage All For One. This came off a bit silly if the comic is truly the root of all evils. It's not like how that character from another series where he felt villains should win for once. After all, this is the main villain we're talking about. Clearly, he didn't like what his little brother's opinion determined that despite the world has become like a comic, not everything implies the same, especially the outcome. Funny because lately comic book has been 
going twisty, like killing their characters off and world ending. But I digress. It was at this moment when the quirkless brother obtains the power of one for all thanks to his older brother forcing the power upon him. That's where the story ends. It's basically a deeper look to what all might explain before, now with more visuals and emotional conflicts. It's interesting to see how All for One brought chaos with the sneaky use of his ability. The comic reference is iffy to me, seeing how it emphasized to be the beginning of different paths between the two. I don't think it's setting up for paint-esque change from Naruto, but that will be a rude awakening. I don't know the purpose behind it, but it's likely to set up for the next arc or at least give Deku something to do. One for All talks to Deku like he's telling him to purchase the next tape for details. The price is more percentage use of the quirk. I wonder if Deku does unlock more. Will we see more of later on or more back to the past when they're kids? Granted, the childhood portion can still occur during the event like in a fight between the two. But we have to wait and see. One for All interacts Deku like they're friends. So basically, they can communicate like Naruto and QB, Aang and past avatars, and so on. He reassures him that he's not alone. The ending is interesting. Ayama's senses are tingling and checks Deku to see what's wrong. It turns out Deku's room is a mess and it's because of him with the activation of All for One. I don't know what that implies exactly. Did he gain a power up from connecting with the first? Is it activated unconsciously in order to view the past? This left me intrigued to understand why. I do believe Kohi made an error on the arm for it's supposed to have scars unless it addresses to be cleansed. For now, I'll go with the former. It happens. Everybody forgets a scar or something. It happens. I thought this was a good chapter. It was neat to see the sinister display of All for One with his tyranny and chaos the followers ensued. The art is pretty good on capturing the terror with the background left unfinished intentionally. The comic reference is concerning though perhaps I am making a big deal out of it. But the way how he dressed seems very significant. Deku waking up with his quirk activated unconsciously got me curious. What also got me curious is what's next for him. What is he going to do about it? Ask All Might? After the break, we will know. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoy this one. There's a break because of the holidays, so that's why there's a double issue. But regardless, at least it gives us a time to relax and think what's going to happen next. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think Deku is going to ask All Might more questions about All for One and One for All? Do you think he's going to get very curious about the other remaining past history? So he probably decided to train much harder in order to unlock more of the story. What the next arc will be about? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.